In this video, I want to talk about operations and what they are. We do have some very basic operations that we should be comfortable with, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we denote them by symbols, like the plus sign, the minus sign, the time sign, and the divide sign. However, I now want to look at general operations, something that's a little beyond just these four. And I'm going to use a star to denote my general operations, although you can use any symbol that you want. But for now, I'm just going to use this asterisk symbol here. The very vague kind of definition of a general operation would be we want to combine two elements of a set to get another element. If we add two numbers, we take two numbers and then we output another number. So for instance, two plus three, we would take two elements, two and three, and we would get another element, in this case, five. So let's try to be a little more precise about this definition of an operation. Let's let A be any set. An operation, which once again, we're gonna denote by the star, so an operation star on A, my set, is a rule that assigns to each ordered pair AB of elements exactly one element A star B of A. So I'm going to input an ordered pair and I output another element of A. So the fact that this is ordered is going to be really important. It means it may not be true that A star B is equal to B star A. So that's exactly what this ordered pair part means, that it may not be commutative. But essentially, I should be able to input two elements and output another element of that set. There are three basic things that this definition here gives us that we need to check to see if something is an operation. The first thing, A star B is always defined. No matter what A is and what B is, A star B should be defined. This actually tells me that division is not an operation on the real numbers, since B could not be zero. I couldn't have A equal to one and B equal to zero and have it defined. Therefore, division is not an operation on the set of real numbers. It could be defined as an operation on the set of positive numbers, since then I would be avoiding putting zero on the bottom of the fraction. The second thing, it should be uniquely defined. If I give you two inputs, you should be able to get a unique output. It should be impossible to get two possible outputs for your given input. Finally, if A and B are in my set A, then A star B must be in my set A, so I cannot leave my set. A good example, subtraction is not an operation on the positive numbers, since 2 minus 3 would be negative 1, which would be no longer a positive number. So it must always be defined, and it must still be in the set. So let's look at some very basic examples. Let's start with division. Division is not an operation on R, as I said before, since three divided by zero is not defined. So it's not an operation on the real numbers. It is an operation on the positive real numbers, which we denote by R plus to indicate that we're only talking about positives. It's also an operation on the non-zero real, so all numbers except zero, which we denote by R star. Next, let's consider addition, another very basic operation. This will be an operation on R. Adding two numbers is always defined. It's unique. And if I add two real numbers, I still get a real number. It's also an operation on Z, the set of integers. Adding two integers gives me another integer. I can always add two integers and it's uniquely defined. It's also an operation on m by n matrices. So if I have two m by n matrices, I can definitely add them and get a unique answer that is still an m by n matrix. However, it's not an operation on general matrices. As an example, if I have this matrix one, two, three, four, and another matrix 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and I try to add them, this is not defined. So this is not an operation since we need operations to be defined no matter what my two inputs are. So it's not an operation on general matrices. As long as I guarantee all my matrices are of the same size, it's an operation. But as soon as I move to general, general matrices, I lose my operation. Let's consider the set H, which is the set of all n squared such that n belongs to Z plus. So n needs to be a positive integer. And we're going to look at the set of all n squareds. And I want to know, is addition an operation on H? First, let's think through what H actually is. Well, it's the squares. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. So is addition an operation? Well, in this case, no. For 1, we can see that 1 plus 4 is equal to 5, which is not in H. However, we can think about it generally as well. If I take something of this form, and then something else of this form, it is not equal to n plus m squared, or in general, a number squared. It doesn't have to be equal to another integer squared, as we see here. So it is not an operation on addition. Is multiplication an operation on this set? We could try to multiply some of these. For instance, 4 times 9 is 36, so that seems to work. But we don't want to prove it that way. Showing that something doesn't work is a counterexample. It's a great way to prove something is not true, but to prove something is true, we would have to check every single possible multiplication on this infinitely long set. So instead, I'm going to take a general element of h, like n squared, another one, like m squared, and I'm going to recognize that properties of exponents tell me this is nm squared. Since n and m were both positive integers, we know that nm is a positive integer. If I multiply two integers, I still get an integer, and if they're both positive, the product is still positive. So this, nm squared, still belongs to h. So I took two things in h and showed that their product is still in h. So that does satisfy an operation. I also need to prove that it's always defined, but we know these are just real numbers and multiplication is always defined for two real numbers, as well as being unique. So the only thing we really needed to show is that it was still in our set. Let's consider a set of two elements, a, b. One way we can describe our operation is with a table. So I'm going to write all the possible ordered pairs, as well as what I'm claiming is the output. So I could do a, 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 b, b, a, or b, b. So I have all of my possible ordered pairs on the left and then their products or the results under this operation on the right. And there are lots of different possibilities. I could make these all be equal to a. That would be one possible outcome. I'm going to go ahead and do another one, so we'll call this star 1. We could do star 2. And make them A, B, A, B. And essentially, we could make this output column anything as long as it's only A's and B's. So if I do star 3 of Y, I could do B, A, B, A. If I do star 4, so a different operation, maybe this time I have B, 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 A, and there are more possibilities as well. But this is another way to be able to describe an operation is giving these types of operation tables. Operation
separation tables can also be written like multiplication tables. So let's suppose I'm going to consider three element sets and their elements are going to be 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to essentially write a multiplication table. We're going to say 0 star 0 is 0, 0 star 1 is 1, 0 star 2 is 2. 1 star 0 is 1, 1 star 1 is 2, 1 star 2 is 0, 2 star 0 is 2, and then 0 and 1. So this is another way to do it, essentially a multiplication table. And once again, this isn't unique. I'm going to define another operation. This time I'm going to call it triangle. So A, triangle B. And we still have our same inputs and outputs. The main thing, since order does need to be important, is we need to make sure we read this table correctly. So this time I'm going to do it a little bit different. Here I'm going to have 0, 0, 2. So if I want to do, for instance, 1 star 2, I need to start with row 1 and column 2. So the output would be 2. On the other hand, if I do 2 star 1, this time 2 comes first. So I'm going to need to go down row 2 and then column 1 to get the answer of 0. So we do need to make sure we start by the, with the row and then the column. 